All right. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, this is the October uh, meeting of the formerly Queen City uh, Dynamic User Group, now rebranded Southern Fried DNN. Um, we are excited to have a pretty full house uh, here in the Microsoft Studio, um, uh, Microsoft Campus uh, for uh, Southern Fried DNN uh, here this evening. And we have a good collection of people online. This is what we love to see. Um, both David and I have been um, kind of digging our heels in and trying to help uh, promote the user group and uh, do a little bit more uh, prep to see what we can do to get some more people, to get some more presence, and to get some more uh, uh, more visibility out in the community so we can not only spread the word about DNN um, and the DNN community, but also just touch a few more people, see if we can grab uh, some more new folks coming in. Um, I liked, uh, I think I'm going to give uh, props here to uh, Johnny there, uh, who had one of our uh, spatulas from uh, So Fry from the event uh, back in 2014 or 2013. Uh, so uh, props for bringing that out here tonight, uh, Johnny. <clears throat> um, so uh, for tonight's meeting, uh, we're going to run through a range of uh, different topics. Um, Everybody's uh, welcome to participate as we jump into these, but uh, to begin with, we're going to have David talk a little bit about DNN8 and some of the buzz of things that are coming uh, with DNN8, and I'll kind of give an introduction to that in just a moment. We're going to talk about the DNN8 module challenge, which is new to me. If you feel like uh, sometimes there are announcements that happen and you wonder if you caught them right when they came out, uh, this one's brand new from this month, and it's pretty exciting, so we're going to talk about uh, the opportunities there and uh, what it means. Uh, DNN Workgroups is another uh, new announcement uh, that uh, I'd like to promote and uh, talk about a little bit. And uh, we're going to spend time talking with our uh, good buddy Johnny Gregory uh, from Manage.com, formerly PowerDNN. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, everything hosting right now, uh, DNN specific, but uh, also uh, see if we can't get some inside stories about how fun it is to uh, to work in a hosting environment like that where every day has some kind of fire uh, to put out and uh, the ups and downs of managing customers like us who are demanding about our hosting. Um, so to uh, get started here this evening, uh, let's uh, switch over here to David and we're going to talk about um, uh, DNN8 and some of the things that are uh, coming up about DNN8. Um, DNN8 was announced uh, a while back. It's been in release so that we can all be playing around with it and tinkering. Uh, I think in one of the next sessions, uh, if you haven't had a chance to really play around with it yet, uh, we'll do a session where we kick the tires and take a look at it and allow all of us here uh, present to play around with DNN8. But uh, it got me thinking about when I first heard uh, about DNN8 and what the plans were and what things were coming up. Um, there, were, there was a lot of hubbub. There was a lot of uh, buzz about what was coming. And um, I thought as a kickoff to David, you know, saying that this buzz is here and people are really getting excited, uh, does it hold up to what people were excited about at the beginning? You know, if I look back here at the announcement um, for DNN8, uh, our good buddy Mitch Sellers uh, was saying that he was really excited and that he thought this was a paradigm shift in what we could expect out of DNN and that simplicity and elegance uh, we're going to be here and that he was excited about it. We have quotes uh, from a lot of different folks who say that, um, you know, this was going to be a complete change in bringing new people to the table and making it a lot easier for people to manage things. So um, as, a, as a segue into what David's going to run through, uh, how has that held up and how has that blossomed um, going forward now, eight months down the road? Yeah, so there's a, a really – really exciting time really for DNA community and stuff because um, things have, things are really changing quite a bit um, in in the space as far as what's possible and capable <laughs> oh gosh the, uh, I don't see the <laughs> Sorry. you don't want to see me here I'll sit because I'm a little taller <clears throat> um, yeah so let me see if I can ooh, I think I stopped sharing the screen somehow Oops. Yeah, and I'll just pull up here. Um, if you if you don't know already, the roadmap is shared on the DNNsoftware.com, so you can kind of see what's 
what's what's coming up it's it's not incredibly detailed but it is nonetheless has the highlights and I'm trying to get this yeah so if you go under the community section under learn the roadmap is at the bottom here so this will be a, a good little highlight of, of what to expect um, in the 8.0 release and you'll see here um, there's several different focus areas. Um, one, you know, the, the rest of the world has really kind of moved on from web forms, and DNN at its core is based on web forms. That is still the case. However, they've done a tremendous amount of work in um, moving things to, to where it allows uh, MVC development as well as SPA, you know, with just straight HTML and CSS to be wrapped within that context and be utilized. So <clears throat> you'll see here that the, uh, the MVC modules and single page application modules, SPA, are first class citizens now uh, in the 8.0 release. And um, I, you know, I thought maybe I'd just open that real quick for any questions on that, you know, because I don't want to assume that everybody knows what that is or, or anything, but um, this kind of opens it up to a, a broader community in general uh, for that. Are there any questions around that? I was going to do the same thing in the module contest to talk about the two different paths you can be on. Okay, maybe we'll shelve it until yeah. then or whatever. But um, So an, another area that's, um, that's getting quite a bit of buzz too is, um, and Clint, you'll probably appreciate this, you just recently did a hangout on forms and lists and kind of doing some extreme things with that. Pretty cool stuff. Um, there has not been a core feature in DNN to handle that type of, of, of dynamic content um, and being able to pull information out of a database in a form and list type fashion. And now there's a great solution in there um, and the foundation of that is the dynamic content creator. There's two modules associated with that, uh, but that's pretty, pretty neat. So um, I think CTP6 just dropped recently. So if you haven't already, you know, go out to GitHub on the DNN platform and download the latest CTP on that and uh, kick the tires a little bit. It's, it's, it's pretty sweet what you can do in there. Now, um, it will be moving to the framework 4.5 as a requirement. So um, just a heads up on that. That's not as big of a shift as going to 4 was, but um, it nonetheless is there. And then also there's a significant amount of work being done to separate the platform and UI. And uh, probably, probably the most prominent of that is all the admin modules are being decoupled from the platform so that there is a truly possibility for a light type installation of DNN now. Um, so the, all of those still exist um, for install and use but uh, most of them, I think, are being uh, stripped out for that. You know, not everybody needs the newsletter module, for instance, under admin or some of those type of things. So um, leaps for a lighter and hopefully better, quicker, faster, great platform. Uh, so buzz-wise, everyone's excited about what they're doing inside of it and, and excited about that direction. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of activity on GitHub right now. Um, you know, people contributing to the platform and um, helping towards those ends. Uh, there's also, you know, I think everybody's still trying to wrap their head around what it means to develop an MVC or a SPA module. Um, and that's one of the reasons I think the contest was created to try to help develop some best practices in that area. Um, and I don't know if you were going to mention this or not, you may not even have seen it, um, but just last night, Joe Brinkman um, contributed to Chris Hammond's uh, module template solution, uh, a SPA module template to be used. So that's uh, pretty big news there. So the first kind of official template there. It's it's not been pulled in yet. It's just a pull request, but that'll be coming soon, hopefully. So. Oh, <laughs> so it is rumored that is Chris Hammond is the DNN idiot. Wow. Oh, did he? Okay, I, I saw SPA uh, pull request come in, but I did not see the other one. So, yeah, so it's a great time, really, for, I was just going to leave it with, uh, you know, for the greater development community to now 
come in and start working with DNN in a fresh light because of the capabilities there. You know, if you're an MVC developer, which a lot of the world is, now you can build modules in DNN. So great time, and SPA is kind of open to the greater JavaScript front-end mm -hmm. kind of development community, and the whole idea behind that is now now possible with NDNN. So really exciting time. Well, um, thank you, David. Um, I think we'll... Uh, Kind of uh, segue on to that. I don't want to keep Johnny waiting uh, for too long, but it's a pretty good um, segue to talk a little bit about this uh, DNN module contest. And um, so what I'm going to bring up on screen, um, I assume I'm still in camera view uh, for this, um, but uh, the DNN module contest was announced uh, here in the beginning of October. Uh, this is something where they have continued to add a little bit more information to this as it goes along, and they're still working out some details about how they want to um, uh, do things. Uh, they said right now the main focus is get started thinking about what you want to build. Get, start, get started building uh, the module that you want to submit, and uh, some of this will finalize uh, here shortly. But as a quick overview uh, for this, I'm going to zoom out just a touch. Um, there's, uh, of course, this concept that we now have a, a DNN 8 module challenge. They want to see modules built that are either, either MVC-based or SPA-based modules, and uh, they're opening it up to the community uh, to vote on these. And there are going to be a range of different prizes and categories of those particular uh, prizes and, uh, and voting. So first off, Grand prize in each category, five thousand dollars. <throat> that is a that is a sizable contribution uh, to your development time. Uh, second place in these categories is fifteen hundred. That is nothing to uh, to scoff at. There are going to be three different categories: best MVC module, best uh, single page application SPA module, and then the community choice award. So we all have an ability to vote in uh, these modules when we get to see them. You know, at the moment they haven't posted, obviously we're in the beginning of the contest right now, but when they post them, we're gonna have some kind of voting capability so that the community can help weigh in. Uh, maybe that's the one that also gets chosen as the um, best MVC module. If that's the case, you get the top grand prize in both, you could walk away with $10,000. So, um, they uh, talk about that the um, judging for these is going to be in point-based uh, categories for uh, the UX UI under ease of use and uh, clean modern UI. The value, as in this is a valuable module, not just an exercise that somebody does in a school environment or that doesn't have real-world application. They want to see some value in these modules. Um, so does it solve a real-world problem? Is it something that's unique? Is it something that hasn't been seen before? What, what's the, the value here for it? Innovation, quality. Uh, these uh, talk about the creative use of DNN platform features. Are you doing something awesomely that DNN does really well? Um, use of external services. The quality of how well it's built. Does it log errors? Does it work as expected and have a lot of different features to it? Um, input validation, in, install and uninstall um, ease and properness of all of that. They have extra credit for localization, whether it's searchable. Um, so when we are all voting, I assume these are the things we're going to be assigning credit to um, and voting underneath of these for the modules that we feel um, is the top uh, for these. So um, they have a few requirements and some dates uh, for this. Um, it was announced on October the 7th, so people have all just gotten started thinking about what they want to build or working this out. The submission deadline is January 1st, so we have until the end of the year to make something awesome and um, submit it to them. The winners will be announced just two weeks after that. So January the 14th will be when their winners are announced. That means we're going to have a very short period of time for, uh, for community voting. Um, and uh, then the community choice winners will be announced February the 3rd. Um, so they have a couple of requirements about this. Um, main requirement that jumped out to me is that this has to be open source. This isn't you creating a module that then you're going to sell, although you might have a pro version or some kind of thing like that, but 
they're saying this is for the spirit of open source. They want to encourage that and they want to put that out here. And that's a lot about what they're trying to do with this. Um, they do talk about MVC versus SPA. Um, and uh, they mentioned that it doesn't have to be all one or all the other. So they're going to put it into a category based on the primary function or the primary amount of what has been built in one thing or another. So you can mix and match in something. It doesn't have to strictly be one thing or another. Um, but it, obviously, if it's a, if the main interface is a single page application, then they're going to judge it into that category as being um, SPA. Um, so, uh, you know, just to finish this off real quick, uh, they would love to communicate with everybody who's thinking about participating. They want to see the activity and they want to see uh, what they can do to help people get started. So if you um, sign up and say that you're interested in doing this, uh, then you're going to be signing up for the developer newsletter that comes out for DNN 8. Um, but one of the things I was uh, pointing out earlier was that they try their best to help you get started in this. Um, so you can see uh, links here to download uh, the latest DNN 8, um, blog information for module development from Charles Nurse, Chris Hammond's uh, module templates, which I assume this link is going to have then the newest uh, spa that was just added to it um, and then you know the community uh, all of us are going to be in this taking a look and helping each other so if uh, if anybody's uh, thinking about participating I'd love to hear about it love to have you guys talk about it if you're uh, planning on doing something if um, you ply us with enough drinks and uh, a camaraderie uh, we could even consider all of us doing one together but um, let's see what comes out of that as we um, as we all talk if nothing else We'll root for all the ones we know are happening and help wherever we can for anybody that's uh, trying to put something together for this. Um, who all is doing one? Is, is anybody uh, joined online that is putting one together? Um, David says he's putting one together. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So whether whether we can hear on the microphone or not, Clint's saying that he's going to build one and he has a goal in mind. You know, nothing ground. Breaking, he says, but he has an idea of what he wants to do, and he wants to give it a shot. Uh, you know, one of the guys on my team, uh, Fred King, says he's interested in it and um, thinks it's a pretty great idea. We just have to think about how to leverage maybe some things that we've built before that we're now going to build differently and try and build as a, as a as an SBA or or something in DNN8. So uh, we might we might join in here. We'll we'll see. Brian, yes, Grant. Can you tell us about the uh, benefits of um, so uh, my analogy is going to be that uh, you're building in .NET and you have a different way of approaching things. Not everything can be built as a single page application. Uh, for me, single page applications are about getting instant data, seeing that data update. Um, think about an, uh, a display that's going to show you bus schedule as the bus goes through route in a location. You're seeing that real time. You're seeing that active. That is a great use of a single page application. That's not going to be the greatest, you know, greatest thing for you to do. Um, I don't know, um, uh, full time tracking and accounting of all your employees in a spreadsheet. You know, uh, some things lend themselves to MVC traditional module building. Some things lend themselves to having an SPA front end. Um, and I would put it more to some of the developers to answer that. Why would you do one versus the other? It depends on what you're trying to build. Angular. Well, but you also have, the, the, the idea is everything is served for the same package. You know, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be. 
could have buttress as a dashboard that could be a single page application that would have a dashboard that has multiple tabs. It's just that it's all, all the data is there and everything's in the Ryan, I want you to repeat what we're saying. No one can hear. Oh, so I have to uh, repeat everything. Um, David said that uh, SPA modules are awesome and uh, MVC modules are awesomer. Um, um, I am a developer by learning, not by training. So I was going to let uh, some other people that are a little more technical reply to it, but uh, the synopsis is that not everything lends itself to being an SPA, not everything lends itself best to being expressed as an MVC module, but that David was saying that if you're talking about a single page application being delivered, you're dealing with HTML, JavaScript, uh, jQuery, uh, CSS, you're spitting everything out in one page download and then doing everything from it in whatever form. So jQuery, Angular, all of these other things that you might already have skill sets in that you couldn't have developed in before or otherwise. So in general, bringing, um, bringing MVC to the table and bringing um, SPA to the table means that there are a lot more developers that are building these things every day now being able to do that and leverage it through DNM. I, I hate to always make the thing yep. that comes out of me be about databases, but I mean, where are you connected with databases? It depends. Or is it, or huh? Yeah, it, it depends, but you're doing it um, uh, Ajax-based, and you're connecting, and you're just bringing the data back. No posts, so you can get it on load, or you can get it Ajax-based and go back and forth. Or not. Or Firebase, and you're... All right. Uh, all right, guys, um, I uh, want to go ahead and bring Johnny into the conversations. Uh, he's been very patient uh, waiting with us as we, uh, we got started. Let me give him a brief introduction, and we'll get started um, going through uh, just a little bit um, of uh, setup just to introduce you to PowerDNN. If you don't uh, happen to know who PowerDNN is, um, you should know now who Manage.com is. Um, so uh, a few years back uh, when people were asking, where should I host my DNN website, uh, there was a hole. There were not focused uh, hosts that knew or specifically worked on um, DNN or DNN alone. And PowerDNN came into this um, area and uh, really claimed it as their own. Um, they've been a longtime sponsor of DNN events. Uh, they've been a longtime sponsor in the community. And even though they've now um, opened their branding, changed their message from being just PowerDNN, uh, it's really speaking to who the company was all along, which is a much larger footprint. Um, uh, they rebranded themselves uh, last year to be managed.com. Many of us were still using PowerDNN.com as our domain to go to. We were still logging in there for a time. And uh, here recently in the last month or two, it forces you uh, over to managed.com. So um, I will probably after today, stop saying PowerDNN uh, at all, and I will say manage.com proudly. Uh, so Johnny Gregory uh, has met us at several different uh, community events, DNNCon, uh, things like that, and he's a, a good buddy to, uh, to join us here tonight and uh, submit to us asking him all kinds of questions and uh, perhaps some heckling. So um, thank you very much, Johnny, for, uh, for joining us here tonight. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Glad, to, glad I can catch up with some familiar faces. All right. Uh, well, Johnny, um, I sent you a couple of questions beforehand. Um, these uh, type of interviews and type of hangouts, I like to keep to a very informal uh, format where we uh, we hang out just like we caught you at an after hours event uh, at one of the user groups, uh, at one of the uh, conventions. And, uh, and you know, just shoot the breeze, talk about what pain points you have, the things you're enjoying. So uh, let's kind of start there. Um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what your uh, position is uh, inside of Managed, and um, I guess on top of that, um, the hats that you're supposed to be wearing versus the other hats that you also wear every day because you probably do nine jobs just like all of us do. <laughs> right, well, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I am the, my official title is the Senior Technology Consultant for Managed.com. Uh, basically what I do is I help 
customers that are using .NET Nuke find a place for their website on the internet. And by doing that, it could be in a single shared hosting environment or it could be in a web farm. You know, it just depends on the situation, but um, pretty much in, in layman's terms, that's exactly what I do. I started my background in technical support and moved into a sales consulting type of position and just grew with that uh, throughout the years here at PowerDNN and now Manage.com. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so in your um, in that capacity or in your role, um, some of the things you love doing the most versus uh, some of the things that are the biggest pain in the neck that you deal with every day? Well, stuff like this is obviously one of the perks because, you know, you get to talk to all your buddies that you get to meet at the different conferences and, you know, you talk to on a daily, weekly, monthly basis sort of thing. And so, you know, really getting to connect with the people who are like-minded, enjoy the technology, enjoy what, you know, they're working in as far as their space. And so that's the part that I really enjoy about this business, uh, especially with DNN because it has such a focused community aspect to it. Um, which you don't see in some of the other applications that we're, you know, might be familiar with. Um, some of the pain points that I have is just, you know, basic learning of new things that come about. And so, you know, we have to become adaptable to, uh, you know, just like what you were discussing earlier with MV MVC and SPA, you know, new ways to be able to create things, which not, a, not necessarily is a pain point, but it is something that you have to be able to adapt to. Um, and then just being able to uh, hopefully find the right solution for customers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not, not everybody can fit into the same mold. And so, you know, part of that is just finding out where they're at. Um, you know, uh, get segue or, or topping onto that. Um, are there funny stories in the hosting world behind the doors? and you guys laugh a whole bunch, or is it all stories of stress and things on fire and what you did today to save the world versus what you did yesterday to save the world? <laughs> um, yeah, there, there, are, there are some good stories to be had, and it's, it's generally, you know, where you, 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 you like to, you have the typical, you know, pain points with customers where you're just saying, oh man, I wish, I wish you would just understand me. And we have to remember that sometimes we as technology experts tend to use a lot more acronyms than we probably should <laughs> with people who have no idea what acronyms mean. And so I, I think that is just kind of one of those funny things where like, this person didn't understand what I was talking about. And I was like, well, you use five different acronyms. <laughs> and they run a donut shop, you know? <laughs> yep. Well, how has that transition gone from uh, PowerDNN to Manage.com from, uh, from the community standpoint? Uh, been well received? Been pretty smooth? Yeah, you know, we, we've done really well. Uh, you know, we, we've been fortunate enough to, to claim a, a domain name that uh, I think is really nice. Um, and, you know, we've been running our analytics on everything. And so, you know, we've been seeing that the, the branding change uh, has actually increased our uh, our brand awareness and it's now at an all-time high um, but one thing that it's actually done for us is it's been able to allow us to showcase our overall main talent as a company which is our support team mm -hmm. and so you know more people are coming to us to be able to provide support in a very large aspect uh, uh, in, in a much broader aspect of what we're doing so larger larger audiences are seeing us as a support arm of their, you know, their businesses. And so one of the things that we've been doing that's kind of, it's not really new to us, but it's something that we're, we're focusing a little bit more on is providing offsite support services for DNN. And so there are times when customers just can't host with us for security reasons, or they have policies and procedures in place that don't allow them to, but we can come in and still be that support arm for them and provide them the 24-7, 365 support based on the access that they give us. That's impressive. Uh, most people don't like to touch a box if it's not their box. Uh, the fact that you're willing to go out and work on someone else's box, that's singular. Um, 
It's it's been it's been something of a, of a learning process because we do have certain requirements when we have something that's mm -hmm. like this. You know, we like to have see the servers built in a certain way, um, and we also like to make sure that we maintain a certain level of access because if we can't reach a database to troubleshoot, you know, that cuts our support you know, in half of what we can actually do. And so, you know, we work with the customers to kind of build that connection so that we can provide the same level of support as if they were hosted with us. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, just to talk about your support for anybody that doesn't host with um, PowerDNN, um, they have always had, in my mind, uh, some kind of competition going on so that when you post a support request, inside of the bank of people who are supposed to reply to these, they are trying to reply in 30 seconds to a minute, and they are trying their best to beat each other. Um, so I can imagine that they're having some kind of competition on the inside to see who can answer a question the fastest before the person's even done typing, the question's been a uh, answered. But, uh, uh, all right, uh, I'll come back to it. Um, but uh, one thing that is singular, um, compared to any other host that I've ever worked with over years and years is that they will call you on the phone. And that is a new thing that they've been doing now for a while. But when you post a support question and they answer that support question for you, they will follow that up with a phone call to you within a few hours to ask you, has that been resolved and do you have anything else? So anyone who can have a hosting company call you on a support ticket that's unheard of, and uh, it's, it's one of my favorite things about uh, Manage.com. Uh, so there, uh, uh, making you blush, uh, just uh, promoting and uh, giving you a shameless plug for uh, for how awesome uh, you are doing that. Um, Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, so Clint, what uh, what was the uh, chat item? Yep. Uh, is Manage.com uh, Fed Ramp certified? We are not, but that is definitely something that is on our radar. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means that we have to go through a certain process to be able to be considered the Fed Ramp uh, certified, and so it's just a matter of us being able to get through that. Um, with the recent changes of you know just us going through the branding retrain, re retrain, um, and then also you know. Uh, I'll just get it out there just because I know people have probably heard, you know, we are under new ownership. And so we've got a lot of things that we're doing um, to be able to uh, get everybody up to speed to where they need to be. But then we've been fortunate enough that our new owners um, who are not venture capitalists or anything like that, they, they believe in 100% ownership of their businesses. And um, they've allowed us to really come to them and say, hey, this is, this is what we're seeing the market is doing. This is where it's going. Um, and then they've allowed us to be able to say, we want some next-gen hardware and so that we can al allow for our business to grow as a hosting company to be scalable, to have better infrastructure. Um, so we've gone through and done some pretty major upgrades to, uh, to our infrastructure. Uh, and also we're, help we're developing new software and tools to help our customers with more seamless uh, installations of their applications and their servers to just kind of have a more a more holistic approach to hosting to where we can allow people to do a lot more but then also still rely on us for support. Uh, so to Rob's question about uh, FedRAMP, um, is that uh, more of a question of physical security and uh, geographic redundancy or things like that or like HIPAA is it a mix of security and protocols and, and um, liability uh, control? Um, it, it's a mix of a little bit of everything. I, I haven't done, I, I'm not personally involved with that part, part of a, you know, us getting these types of certifications. But from what I do understand is that it's, it's a level of infrastructure, it's a level of policies and procedures that are in place, mm -hmm. and then also being able to go through the proper, you know, paperwork and making sure that, you know, just like PCI and HIPAA, that you have all these things lined up in place so that you can show, you know, yes, we are this certified in mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Um, so uh, kind of as a, uh, as a segue off of security, um, 
you um, saw a lot of the waves of spam bot registrations that would have hit uh, the DNN websites and are still hitting the DNN websites. Um, I know early uh, days of that, even though that was hitting us to begin with fall last year, um, some of the uh, knowledge base articles that were on PowerDNN at the time were the ones I was going to to learn about different ways to lock that down. Um, how much do you remember seeing that, and is that still one of the main things that uh, that you're seeing for security for you know regarding the DNN instances that you're helping support? You know, l luckily it's tailed off quite a bit in the last probably four to six months, um, just because of the fact that you know there was a there was a pretty large deluge of people that were getting hammered by these spam bots, and luckily you know we had some help with some folks in the community. Um, uh, the name is escaping me right now, but a gentleman from, uh, I believe, Australia um, helped us out to help actually build our KB article uh, to be able to, you know, help the customers that are doing it. And we're happy to just, you know, provide that information because at, at the very core of it, you know, we just want to make sure that people were happy with their websites because, you know, if people can be fickle. And, and, and if something's not working, they're going to try something different. So we want to make them sticky in DNN. And so just by providing that sort of assistance, we can keep people involved and in, um, still using Dynamics. So. Yeah. Uh, so as we kind of uh, wind down to the end of uh, questions uh, here, uh, you have tips or suggestions or um, some things to share with us that have been, uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, your favorite tip to share to people in DNN sites to make sure they don't foul up uh, what they have running in their hosting or uh, speed tips or security tips? Yeah, there, there's a couple of different things that um, for, for us are just basic things that we do within our hosting uh, in general. Um, but for, for the user, for the developer who is using .NET Nuke and needs a hosted environment, um, some of the things that you would really want to consider when you're looking at that is how many sites are you planning on hosting and what is the plan for those websites? Are they e-commerce? Uh, and if they are e-commerce, how do you plan on doing your uh, your, your payment processing? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be tokenized, or do you need a PCI compliant environment? Things like that. And so you really want to take a, a, a good look at what you're doing with the website, so that you can um, process that within your your hosting um, service. Mm -hmm. um, but also, when you are, especially in a dedicated server environment or a cloud server environment. Uh, you also have to take into consideration the the consumption of resources. And so if you think about it, everything from the operating system, SQL, mail, uh, control panel, if you have it, they all have costs. And what I mean by cost is that each one of those takes a certain amount of resources, as well as .NET Nuke. So you, if you're looking at you know 10 websites, you think of the overhead cost of what it costs to be able to run the server itself. And then if you're looking at 10 websites, you can roughly estimate, okay, I know .NET Nuke consumes about 100 to 200 megs of, of RAM. And so if you have 10 sites, multiply that by 200, by, by 200 you can kind of determine how much RAM you're going to need for that just so that you know exactly what threshold you're going to be at in terms of when you get to the um, load the websites up. And so those are some of the things that we actually see happen very often is that um, you have to be able to teach the, the, the customer how all of these things affect your server. Even sites that aren't necessarily um, live, mm -hmm. if they're loaded in IIS, they're going to take some, some level of resources. And so you just have to take, take consideration about that. And then um, the last the last thing as far as just the basic hosting configuration is take into consideration about your SQL version. Um, you know, SQL Express is our default because it's the um, most utilized version. Most people don't have websites that need much more than what SQL Express gives. Uh, but there are limitations to SQL Express. And so if you have a website that has a database that's over 10 gigabytes um, in size, then SQL Express just probably isn't for you. Uh, and so you might need to go to web or standard. And so most hosting providers will be able to, to get you to that point to where you need to have those versions. Uh, I prefer, as you know, most of my customers have, 
a SQL web just because it takes away the limitations of uh, the CPU and the space. Um, and then just make sure that you have, you know, your basic caching services for DNS. So. Yeah, excellent. Um, uh, do we have any other more questions from the room or Clint, do we have any more questions online? Not yet? Yes, please. Yes. From an academic point of view, um, are there any special prices that they can offer for students to maybe post and try mm -hmm. for okay. a project that's not really real life, but <clears throat> right. they have the experience of really running it? So um, to relay the question to you, Johnny, um, the uh, the question is that um, you know I know that at one point in time you had in the Power DNN side of things a trial where you could start up a hosting location that would already have DNN installed and that was free for a month. Um, th the question was for academic side of things. Do you have a plan or a program right now where students who are learning and just getting started and want to try things out? Um, do you have a plan where people can come in either at a low cost or free for a certain amount of time and um, and kick the tires in and, and get that learning uh, without having to jump right into a, a paid shared hosting? Sure. Yeah, we we still always have our uh, our free trial period, and so it allows person to have a an install even during the free trial. We will migrate a website if you want us to. Um, that's just part of our general services because we want to make sure that people are using what they what they plan on using. And so if they have an existing website that they want to work on as a development site or just a test bed for uh, learning how our environment is configured, that's certainly something that you can do in our environment now. Um, as far as uh, you know something for nonprofits or schools, we do have plans available that are a little bit less uh, cost. Um, that, that could still get you that instant site with a trial period, things like that. So. And how long is that trial period? Uh, 15 days. 15, day, 15 days. So it's not quite a month, it's 15 days. Um, one of the folks online asked uh, the question that I was going to ask you as a, as a lead out uh, for the evening here, and that was um, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Developer Match. Um, not everybody knows what that is or um, you know, maybe the history behind it, but uh, give us a little bit of an introduction to uh, DeveloperMatch.com. Okay, so DeveloperMatch.com grew out of you know, this brain to figure out what to do with the customers who are requesting services that were outside of our standard support. And it was always tailored around coding or content, things like that, that, things that we just generally did, never did because, you know, we're not developers, we're, we're hosting provider. And so um, Developer Match was first introduced as DNN developer um, many, many moons ago, and um, it kind of strung into Developer Match, but basically what the service is, is it's, it's kind of like eHarmony for developers and users. Uh, someone just said that on the on the <laughs> online as well. They said it's like eHarmony for uh, developers. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So so what what we do with this is that um, you know we, we take a a subset of the the website and allow users to post uh, any sort of development projects that they have, and it could range from projects that are a thousand dollars to projects that are fifty thousand dollars. Who knows? You know, it can go as high as the the project is determined. Um, and what we are trying to do is make it to where, you know, a customer can connect with a developer and not have to worry about competing with projects. And, you know, so we're, we're, we're trying to match people up that fit their budget, fit their region, fit their uh, development style or the types of services that they're looking for. And so by doing that, I think it's, it, it has become a pretty successful um, project of ours, and uh, for us, it, it's an absolute no-cost kind of thing. So we don't require anything from our developers to pay us on. We don't require anything for our customers to, to register their projects. It's purely a, a relationship-building tool for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Well, if anyone uh, has another question, either online or in the room, I'll give it just a couple of seconds. Um, 
Otherwise, uh, I think at this point here, just crossing over 740, it's time for us to say uh, good night to Johnny. You can hang out with us here for a few more minutes as we wrap up a couple of topics and then talk about our next meeting. But um, at this point, it's, uh, it's our opportunity to say uh, thank you very much for spending this time with us. Uh, we enjoyed hanging out with you. Um, you're always welcome back anytime that uh, you feel up to being grilled by strange questions. Uh, we would love to have you back again. Uh, thank you, Johnny, for, uh, for joining us. Thanks so much. Appreciate, appreciate everything, and uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Um, I'm right. going to minimize this uh, here just for a minute and uh, kind of go out with a couple of different um, talking points um, real quick. Um, and if Will Stroll is on, I don't know if he's not sharing video or um, audio, but he uh, could certainly chime in uh, here on this. Um, basically, uh, one of the things that I – want to cover and talk about for just a moment is one of the other new sections that was uh, announced on uh, the DNN corporate site. And uh, it's a new addition underneath of the community section uh, called Working Groups. And um, this is a location that doesn't have a lot of information in it. That was one of my first questions about it when I discovered it was, there are no groups. What are these groups? Um, but that is what is being built and determined now. And it's an opportunity for everyone in the community to get involved, and it's a structure for getting involved. Um, so uh, to some extent, our user group that we all come and participate in is the uh, model of a work group that comes together and talks about socializing and promoting and evangelizing uh, DNN. It's like Hair Club for Men, uh, Clint says. Um, but these working groups are organized in whatever we want to organize them around. Uh, create a new group and decide that you want DNN to have a spear of, uh, you know, of philanthropy. Great, let's make a working group about that and let's start putting a whole bunch of stuff revolving around Kiva and all the other things that we want to do. You want to see DNN um, have uh, some different technology base or some different thing, create a working group and let's, uh, let's put that together and talk about it. Um, you want, uh, you see a need or a problem, then this is the ability through the, um, through the corporate site to uh, help promote that and get people organized together. It's meet up for, uh, it's meet up and, uh, groups for, um, for small working groups inside of DNN. So, um, my first uh, foray into this is just a few days old. I, uh, I actually saw that David had it in a signature, and I said, what are working groups? I need to find out more about working groups. Uh, so I followed off of that. Um, so as, uh, as I get a little more involved, I'll help share a little bit more about what that can be about. Um, and Will Stroll there is the one who's putting up with me inside of his working group. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, so uh, just kind of closing out, uh, working groups, um, there is a, a community uh, and promotion working group. Uh, there are several others. If you're interested in being uh, participating in more things, sign up and then uh, see what working groups there are. And if you don't see one, create one and uh, claim it and start doing that. Um, that's, the end of <coughs> that's the end of the stuff that I wanted to go through for our um, run through on the schedule today. Um, what we should uh, close uh, by talking about is uh, making sure we mention to everybody who's still online and everybody who's in the room, um, our next uh, meeting, uh, Dustin, the date on our next meeting is November the what? Let's make sure we promote it and everybody's aware. Uh, we're gonna race here. Is that Gifford? Is that Gifford? <laughs> I think it was Gifford. Um, all right. Um, I was going to go for immediately the third Thursday, but I know we had some that we were moving around. So um, was was normal uh, third Thursday. So so the uh, next uh, the next Southern Fried uh, user group meeting is going to be on November the 19th. Uh, we'll be here again in the uh, Microsoft campus location. Uh, we'll be promoting and talking about the uh, outline for that and who we've harangued to come spend some time with us um, shortly. Uh, that'll come out by email. Um, I do want to also uh, mention a couple of the other things that uh, David has really spearheaded. Um, 
uh, in the last uh, few weeks, uh, he has started up a meetup. Uh, meetup is still a new thing for me in that I don't quite figure out how it falls and where uh, it's used as a tool. But one thing I will say is that it got a lot of visibility very quickly. And uh, so um, we will be promoting things on that meetup. Um, but that's another place to find out information about us. And then um, in next month's meeting, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the website and some of the things that you can expect to see in the website as well uh, as we continue to update some things and, uh, and grow. Um, Clint or David, do you guys have anything else to add as we uh, get a few minutes here before we close? All right. So uh, to relay for people without a microphone, um, what uh, Clint was saying is that, uh, you know, Will Stroll is very uh, supportive and positive uh, about the um, any help and support that people want to put into the training working group, uh, that that's the one that he's uh, part of and that Clint and David are both uh, thinking about evangelizing and what they, they can do to help reach uh, more new people and introduce them to and train them in Donna Nuke. So. Uh, if anyone else uh, has a passion for this or some energy or even a free afternoon or two, that's the point of these working groups is you can get involved and you can participate. Um, and I you know, know from uh, Will's organization in Trello that he tries to break things into bite-sized items that people can jump into or participate in, but it's also completely open to what you see and bring as a passion to the group. And you can propose new things and make your own cards and see where that leads um, as you start to participate and um, – so that's what that's all about. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody online who joined us uh, for our uh, Southern Fried October meeting. Uh, we will see you in November. Brian? Yes. Will? So this – well, I, I do have some news if you guys want to be the first to hear it. Uh, we hate new news. We, we'll schedule that to come later. What you so, got? I think, I think Clint, besides the person that this news comes from, I think Clint's the only person that knows yet. Uh, but it sounds like there's going to be a DN, uh, DNN con somewhere in the East Coast in spring. Uh, um, so the venue is getting locked down this week. I had heard some rumblings and, and an idea about maybe having a virtual one, and then that turned into maybe there's uh, an actual event. So you've um, uh, you've got some more specific news than that, or that's the that's the teaser that we've got. Yes. Yeah, it, it's going to be in the Baltimore, D.C. area, um, but that's all I can say right now until the venue and everything gets locked down, but uh, the final meetings are happening this week. Um, whether we're officially saying it as a, as a Southern Fried group um, or it's just me uh, getting excited about the idea, um, you know, please let us know as soon as there's information and share the urge or, or the information that uh, we'd love to help as much as we can remotely to um, – promote, put on, and or uh, offer to volunteer once we get down there for an event like that. So um, uh, please share that they don't have to do it all by themselves. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Will. Oh, wait. I think you've just volunteered to do the keynote. Is that what that is? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, do you think that uh, like when we had uh, Southern Fried here in Charlotte and they put up colored lights just for us in the the main skyline, uh, that maybe we'll we'll be treated to something when we show up in uh, in DC or Baltimore area? We. All right, all right, all right. Well, uh, thanks, thanks very much, Will, for uh, joining us here at the end. That's exciting news, and we'll see what extra information we can pull out of that uh, for next month in uh, in November's meeting. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, participating, and we'll see you next month.